you guys all read the title, but in this video, I'm going to be talking about my type 1 diabetes, how I manage it, and my day-to-day -day life with it, and all that good stuff. So pretty much for the entirety of me doing YouTube, I've had type 1 diabetes, but I've never actually like felt comfortable talking about it in a video or explaining it or anything like that. But I finally felt comfortable talking about it and I wanted to explain it in this video and it was kind of personal so I kind of held off and I finally felt like now is the time and I wanted to explain it to you guys mainly because I wanted to share more about my day to day life and more about who I am as a person um, rather than just like me talking about um, a block game and commentating over it and you guys watching that obviously I wanted to kind of talk more about you know who I am as a person and yeah so that's all let's just get straight into the video so the first thing I wanted to talk about is the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes so the reason why I wanted to start off with this is because people get these two confused a lot and like what's the difference between them and so I'm gonna go talk about that right now so the differences between both type 1 and type 2 um, are pretty big but I'll start off with type 1 so type 1 is what I have so most people get type 1 around the ages of 6 to 13 and I got it when I was 11 I was almost 12 years old and this was around November of 2019 and I'll get to that in a little bit but um, type 1 is when your pancreas stops producing the insulin that it needs to make or any insulin at all. So, for example, when we eat carbs, whether it's like a cake or whether it's something healthy like oatmeal, for example, um, we still need, our body will still produce insulin because our blood sugar will go up. So whenever someone eats that, the blood sugar will go up and the pancreas will be like hey i need to make insulin so it'll produce insulin um to bring the blood sugar down and then it'll be all good and you don't have to worry about it after that but when you have type 1 diabetes it's the other way around so i basically whenever i eat um i have to calculate the amount of insulin i take depending on how many carbs i have and then from there i decide hey i'm gonna take x amount of insulin and my blood sugar should come down to normal um but sometimes that doesn't happen and my blood sugar goes too low or too high and that's not good so i have to try to find a balance range so um and if i don't take enough insulin that i need to for my food and i'm still my blood sugar is still high afterwards then what i'll do is i'll take a correction dose to bring it back down so it's very complicated or seems very complicated but once you start doing it every day it literally just becomes something in your day-to-day -day life um so it's really not as hard as it sounds so now you know what type one is but what is type two so type two is something that generally older people get um and it's when you are uh, most people get it when they're overweight so normally people get it when they're older like i said but um some people still do get it um at younger ages so type 2 is when your pancreas works fine so it produces the amount of insulin that it needs and that's normal but your insulin is not um like so with type 2 your insulin uh completely works fine so with type 2 diabetes, your insulin amount is fine. Your pancreas produces the amount of insulin it needs, but the insulin is not responsive. So for example, if you were to have something, your body would um, produce the amount of insulin that it needs to bring your blood sugar down from where it is, but it will also um, not work because um, that's just the way type 2 diabetes is. The insulin is not responsive at all so pretty much um now you know what type 1 and type 2 is but how did i get type 1 so back in november of 2019 um i got diagnosed with it 
but it was kind of a really big shock for my family and I as well just because I was extremely healthy I was um, I didn't weigh much at all and I didn't eat that much bad food um, I was generally healthy and everything was going um, fairly normal but um, probably three months prior to the diagnosis I started having some weird symptoms school was ending but I had a miss days um, I was probably almost every day calling my parents being like hey I don't feel good I need to come home and it was almost like a joke at that point because um, you know that's just not real realistic for me to feel sick every single day almost so because of this, um, we started um, like keeping an eye on um, different things, but I had gotten strep throat and I had a sinus infection, um, I had like celiac and a few other things. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but I was on two antibiotics at the time um, and I just felt very sick. And that's why I, we were thinking I felt really sick in school. And that is actually part of the reason why I was um, feeling very sick. But that was not the only reason. Um, so if you want to look up more about this, you can go online and look up like symptoms of type 1 diabetes. And you can learn more about that. But basically, um, there are about eight main symptoms when you have type 1. Um, pretty generic but the biggest one is high urination so I was drinking water like probably four five six times the amount of water that I normally have in a day and literally going to the bathroom um, urinating probably every 30 minutes and this just each like literally almost every single day it was just more and more than every 20 minutes and every 15 minutes and it was so bad to the point where I was like, okay, something is up. This is really weird. So about three weeks before I was diagnosed with type 1, I um, we went to a trip to California. Um, and this was a really fun family trip. I had an awesome um, time there. But we went from, we first went to um, San Diego. I think that's what it's called. Um, and then we went from there to Los Angeles. So pretty much um, we started driving and it was about a five-ish hour drive, but um, I was having to, we were having to stop by um, like gas stations and different spots because I always had to go to the bathroom and I was drinking so much water and it was really unusual and I couldn't do anything about it. Like as bad as it sounds, as embarrassing as it, as it is, like, I could do nothing about it like I couldn't help it and at the time like we didn't know of course you know I that I had type 1 or we never even thought anything of it we just thought okay that's weird you know um, I'll just move on from it <laughs> so from here on um, basically just got worse and worse and by the end of that trip I think the day we were going to leave on our flight like a few hours we went shopping this one place and um, uh, our car had, we had a rental car and um, we had gotten basically robbed inside of the parking lot. I, I could you not, we'd gotten robbed inside the parking lot um, and that was one of the scariest things. So pretty much we were in this shopping center for probably about four to five hours and by the time we got back, we noticed that our car I think was unlocked or something like that but oh yeah basically something in the trunk was missing and uh, that was the first sign then we um, looked in the car and a few other things were missing and it was super weird and then my suitcase was gone and then when my um, when we went to go unlock the car through the little key thing uh, whoever robbed us basically picked the lock um, and it was extremely scary and knowing that i had basically lost all my stuff thankfully insurance covered it and we got everything back it was just a hassle 
but it was super stressful on top of what I was already feeling. My quality of life at that point was just so bad. I couldn't even enjoy like my day to day life then. And, and then a little bit later, I was gonna go back to school and you know, all was going pretty well. And then one morning, I just could not go to school. I could not get out of bed. I just felt so horrible, I had to stay in bed. And my mom was just like, all right, you know what? We're gonna take you to the doctor. And so she took me to the doctor and everything seemed pretty normal there. But um, my mom mentioned one thing that she didn't normally, she was like, well, he's been urinating a lot recently. So I took like, um, like a pee test or whatever. I don't know what they call it. Basically, they got a result and they realized that my ketones were super high in my urine. And because of this, I actually, um, they thought my blood sugar might be high. So they weren't really thinking much of it. And they had to check um, my blood sugar there. And they, the first time they checked it, it said like 600 or higher. I can't remember exactly what the number was. And the normal range is from 80 to about 120. Like that's considered good. Um, and so 600 was like, okay, what the heck? You need to go to the hospital right now. So they didn't think that first reading was right. They're like, okay, that has to be wrong. But then they check it again and they're like, wait, okay, that's actually not wrong. And then at that point we realized, hey, okay, this is actually a problem. So I went to the hospital kind of freaking out because I was like, this could be, I could not be able to eat like half the foods I'm used to eating for the rest of my life. We know much about it. Um, but quite quickly, um, we went to the hospital and um, like I wasn't in like an ambulance or anything. Um, all was all was good. But we drove to the hospital and they put me in this like emergency section and they gave me um, insulin. And so this was kind of unusual for me because it was so like um, right then and there and I wasn't expecting any of it. And then I got diagnosed with type one. And so, um, that was like really honestly scary for me because that was like the first time I've actually gone through something like pretty crazy like that. And um, that was pretty like hard for me. And so then I ended up staying there for about two to three days until I was able to leave once my ketones went back down and then I was um, able to go back home. And I got home. And then I got my phone a few weeks later, uh, my first phone ever, and that was super cool. But the main reason why I got it early is because there's an app with there's like a Dexcom. And you put on this like monitor thingy and it goes on your arm and it basically, or anywhere on your body, and it goes and tracks your um, blood sugar. So it's like 24 seven monitor and it's a continuous glucose monitor. So it basically always is tracking my blood sugar. I can just pull out my phone, I can check it. And so I was basically, you know, telling my family about this or like my, not like my family, family, but um, just like all my relatives and stuff like that about it. And it was super shocking for them because, you know, they never expected me to have anything like this, but it was crazy. So I quickly got used to it and then my brother, who's uh, he's, um, basically was gonna get married at, in Costa Rica, but we had no idea if we could go. And it was literally about like two or three days after we got to the hospital um, or got out of the hospital. So it was kind of a shocker. We got everything ready and um, the um, endocrinologist and a ton of other people were super nice and super helpful for the trip and helping us on what to bring and like what to do here and there and stuff like that. So I go and it was super good and nice. And yeah, that's pretty much the whole story. Um, and just a little recap on now. I'm doing really well. I'm taking less and less insulin. I'm doing great. So honestly, I'm still having to take quite a lot of insulin. I still have high numbers here and there. I still have low blood sugar all the time, which actually, I did not mention that. I need to mention that. So we'll go in one more game. When you have low blood sugar, which sometimes happens when you have too much insulin, um, 
you like f you need carbs, so you need to go downstairs and eat carbs, or you don't need to go downstairs. You just need to go get carbs. So I'm just so used to saying that, like, you know, I gotta go downstairs to the kitchen, eat carbs. Yeah. Anyway, um, back on topic. So basically, I go low. I need to eat carbs. I want to get back up. And then I can go move on with my day. Yeah, that's pretty much all. Um, YouTube has really, really helped me through all of this. And honestly, you guys have been so supportive um, on the channel. Like, it's really amazing. So, yeah, I just wanted to mention this to you guys. Yeah, like and sub. That's all I got to say. And, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll try to be posting much more often. And, yeah, join my Discord. That's all I got to say. Bye.